now time. Okay, and but, but we are, we are live, but we are live. Yeah, this okay. is. Good afternoon. I hope everybody is still awake from lunch. <laughs> but anyway, let's, let's start. Our topic today is migrate from neutron load balancing to the Octavia load balancing system. Still people walking in. But let's uh, start uh, introducing ourselves. My name is German Eichberger. I'm a senior software engineer with Rackspace, and I'm a core reviewer on Octavia, OpenStack, Ansible, Octavia, and as a firewall as a service, and you might notice a theme in the stuff I'm reviewing. And currently, I'm with the Rackspace managed Kubernetes team and helping them with load balancing and architecting how to put Kubernetes on top of OpenStack or AWS or whatever there is. There can put Kubernetes on top. And hi, my name is Carlos Gonçalves. I'm a senior software engineer at Red Hat. Um, I work on OpenStack Octavia. I'm a core um, in Octavia and Neutron Elbas, and I contribute also to Triple O, so that uh, we enable Octavia integration in Triple O. Uh, prior to that, I was a software specialist at NEC, and I was also doing uh, work in OP, OP and FE specifically in the doctor project. Okay, so what is Octavia? Let's start at the beginning. And Octavia is the load balancing project for OpenStack. And we provide a scalable, on-demand, self-service load balancer, which runs on virtual machines or whatever else. And we have the reference load balancing driver, that's the one with the virtual machines, which scales with your compute environment. And we have founded during the Juno cycle of OpenStack. And we have 90 contributors from over 30 companies. It's becoming more and more every cycle. And that's the interesting part. We moved from, it used to be a Neutron sub-project. That's why there's a Neutron LBAS. And then we moved out of that and became our own top-level project. And because during this move, that uh, basically resulted that we had to think about how to migrate people eventually into our uh, our own on the Octavia from Neutron. Um, we also are, always have been the number one Neutron feature, and, if, and I think we got in now to update the user survey to make us move us out of Neutron to reflect our new structure. But yeah. Um, just before the, or, yeah, okay. okay so, do you, so basically, as I said, we started out as part of Neutron. And so we had, we had a Neutron LBAS, which then used the Octavia driver to do Octavia load balancers. And now we moved everything under Octavia. So basically, we want to deprecate Neutron LBAS. And we declared it in the green cycle. And so no new features will be merged uh, since then. And it hasn't been very active anyway. So it's not uh, like there's a huge loss and there's lots of stuff going on there. We then uh, made the plan, at last PDL, we decided to retire Neutron Albas, a Neutron Albas dashboard which goes with it. And that's in September 2019, which is around the U OpenStack cycle, whichever comes first, yeah. So we, when we did that, we weren't sure if the cycles are changing, so we did September 2019, that's our goal. We have a deprecation FAQ, so we can read up what it all means if you're running Neutron Albas. But uh, yeah, it's on the, the wiki. Yeah, so just uh, one note. So because there is the project, Neutron LBAS, there is the LBAS API, and there is Octavia. So whenever we mention Neutron LBAS, we are talking about the project that we are deprecating and retiring soon. If we say LBAS, we are most likely talking about the API, which uh, is it's currently on um, V2, and we also, as we will see, we also support that API in Octavia. So that's mm -hmm. why it is important to uh, clarify what is Neutron LBAS and LBAS, as in the API. Um, so because we are deprecating and retiring soon Neutron LBAS, we wanted to give um, people the power to transition uh, from one to the other project. Neutron, neutron LBAS to Octavia. So for that, we have a few options that people can start using as a migration path to begin or even just to 
migrates uh, from one to the other. So the first one is the Octavio provider driver. That is a provider driver in Neutron LBAS. We will see more details for each of these um, on, on uh, next slides. Second one is a pass-through uh, proxy uh, plugin in Neutron LBAS. Um, we also have uh, the option to uh, have uh, layer seven policies. That, so we put a proxy server in front of Neutron server um, API. Um, and we also validate that the V2 API in Octavia is a superset of the Neutron, um, of the V2 API that is implemented in Neutron, Neutron LBAS. And lastly, we have now a new tool in Rocky that migrates your uh, load balancers from Neutron LBAS to Octavia. And in many cases, or some cases, you will not even have experienced any uh, downtime. Oh, you should go back, because there were some caveats. So it, oh, uh, yeah. the migration tool only works for load balancers, which are created in Neutron LBAS. And it only works for providers, which support the migration. So if you're running like a hardware appliance, like an F5 or a Netscaler or a Radware or whatever, then, then those people would have to support the migration. And, uh, and, and as one of the providers, uh, VMware already has a provider driver for Octavia, and they have successfully used the migration to have be careful with the legalese there. Yeah, <laughs> so if you are running on the backend VMware uh, load balancers, most likely this uh, migration tool will, will work for you uh, for those lo uh, load balancers. Mm -hmm. So the first one that we have is the Octavia provider driver. So you can have still in Neutron LBAS, there is the provider support. You can enable multiple providers. One can be Octavia, so Neutron LBAS can talk to the Octavia driver, and this driver will then talk to Octavia. Um, to enable it um, in the configuration, you just need to well, mm. add it to the list of service providers. Or if you are using the F stack, there is also on the screen the, the option that you need to set. Mm -hmm. We test on our uh, upstream CI. We have a couple of jobs there. So we test the API uh, with Python 2, Python 3, and also the scenario tests. Mm -hmm. So just to, so for you to have an idea of what I just mentioned, so this is, uh, if you have Neutron, you can enable the Octavia uh, provider uh, driver, and it will talk with Octavia, the, the project. And simultaneously, you can still have different other uh, pro, um, load balancers, <coughs> um, for instance, with AJ Proxy, our reference implementation, no, the namespace. The old reference implementation, <coughs> yeah. the namespace driver. Yeah, in Octavia has been the reference since. Uh, yeah. I but you can also have, like, <laughs> from VMware, F5, mm -hmm. all those load balancers. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. okay. Yeah. So one of the migration tools. So if you are still running Neutron, one of the easy things to basically switch over. Once you have all your load balancers on Octavia, you can just install the Neutron proxy plugin, which replaces the Elbas v2 plugin. You might already running there, and the and the proxy plugin basically takes a <coughs> Neutron request. It, it gets bubbled up from Neutron, and then sends it over to Octavia, it comes back, it packages in Neutron form and sends it back. And it's very simple to switch it on, just search in your conf Neutron configuration file for Elbas v2, which is our normal plugin, and, and put minus proxy behind it, and then it will use the proxy driver. And so basically all applications which go to Neutron, they will just work as they worked before, and instead of going to the Neutron Elbas, they will then be proxied over to Octavia. And we also test it on our CI. Here's a picture how that works. So you talk to uh, the Elbas endpoint, or the Elbas plugin, Elbas extension on Neutron, v2o slash Elbas, goes into Neutron, the plugin sh ships it over to Octavia, and then it goes back. There's one caveat. Uh, Octavia and Neutron both manage quotas, so you need to be careful that you set them similar. Because if you, for instance, have like allow only five load balancers on, on uh, let's ten load balancers on Neutron and five on Octavia, then when the user wants to create a sixth load balancer, 
he can't because Octavia will block that and vice versa. So you gotta careful on that because they both do their quota checks. Yeah. So the third option is the direct layer seven. So in this one, um, the proxy server will um, redirect uh, traffic that is targeting to the neutron to the Elbas uh, API to Octavia. The rest of normal neutron calls to create ports and so forth, it will go to continue, it will still continue going to uh, neutron. Um, so to enable it in DevStack, we just set it to the proxy Octavia to true and you will have it. Again, we also test it on our mm -hmm. um, upstream yeah, CI. There should probably be talk about, so, so most people who run OpenStack, they have a load balancer in front of their API servers, uh, in front of a Neutron API, in front of a Nova API, in front of the Octavia API, and so it's very easy to add an L7 rule there and redirect things. Yeah. Again, just a, a picture to illustrate. So again, Neutron, um, Elbas uh, API traffic will be forward now to Octavia, whereas the rest of the traffic to Neutron will continue going to Neutron. Okay. So the so we have started. Um, basically, we implemented the Elbas. Now the Octavia v2 API is compatible with the Elbas v2 API, and it's a superset. So there are so there's more functionality in Octavia, and there will be more functionality coming, and we are now have a, we are also versioning that, so you have a version string and see when changes are. And basically because of the superset, all applications which use the Neutron API endpoint, they will continue to run like nothing changed when you run them against uh, Octavia. So for instance, I think Heat used to run against this and then they just mm -hmm. had a switch that yep. worked. Again, CI jobs there. Then the fifth option, and that's the most, uh, should be like your fun, final one, um, if you want to migrate, uh, actually migrate load balancers from one project to the other, you can use the, uh, the one, or one option that you can use is the uh, uh, migration tool, which is, you can find it in the Neutron Elbas uh, repo under the tools directory. And it's uh, very simple, uh, Garmin will explain it to you. Um, so yeah, we just uh, with this tool, we can, you can you can migrate from uh, Octavia provider driver to Octavia project uh, from the AJ proxy slash namespace driver to Octavia, and then from uh, VMware to VMware um, and so forth from other providers. We also have a, a job downstream um, upstream that tests this um, and. Um, so it creates load balancers, then migrates from one to, to the other, and runs a couple of um, Ansible tasks to verify the connectivity and, and so forth. Okay, so here's the, the tool we have written. It's called NLBAS to Octavia. So it's a very district, descriptive name. And this is all the options you can give it. Uh, the most important ones I highlight with yellow, for instance, the all option means you want to migrate all load balancers in your Neutron Albers database. Uh, the config file you might want to give it so it uses normal Oslo config format, so if you happen to put this into ETC somewhere, then it might find it, but I find it more convenient to just um, specify the config file, the configuration. You can also give it a load balance ID if you only want to um, migrate one load balancer, and you can also basically uh, migrate by project ID if you only want to migrate a certain project for testing or because that makes more sense. So here is, uh, as I said, those are the important command line settings, all, config file, is the path to the config, and then the load balancer ID of a load balancer if you want to do it that way or the project ID. So when we here look at the configuration file, this is we, in the directory where you find the tool that's also a sample configuration file. And I took that and, um, and highlighted what you would need to add to it. So we, so we have to put in the user ID for the Octavia account ID, which is the 
user ID of the Octavia account, if you gave Octavia a service account, and then you have to put in the uh, database connection strings for Neutron and Octavia. So you can find both of them. So the Neutron one you find in EDC Neutron Conf, and the Octavia one you can find in uh, EDC Octavia, Octavia Conf. And then you just copy them and put them in there. In my case, they are both the same because we use the same database connection. But in a lot of installations, there will be a, a specific database users per service, so you would have to copy the different ones. Can you print it now? I think we, we, we want to do the demo at the end. Or? Okay, so let's leave the, the demo. So in the demo, we will show the, this migration uh, tool, but we will leave it to the end so that then we can play better with, with time. Um, okay, yeah. So, so we talked a little bit about the provider support. This was another thing we had to get right before we could uh, deprecate Neutron Albas was that we as of now need to that we need to support providers in Octavia. And basically this is our structure. So we have an Octavia API server and it has a provider driver in it and this can be anything. And um, here, here's the whole architecture when you use the, what we call here the Octavia driver to make things more clear. We renamed that in was it Rocky or Stein into M4 driver. So, then, so it's not Octavia the project, Octavia the thing in Octavia the driver, we want to be different, so it's now, where it says Octavia driver, it should say M4 driver. Basically, we, we wrote our own driver, M4 driver, and, and that goes in, and then we have the Octavia worker, or we should rename that into M4 worker, but it's all a little bit work in progress still. Octavia worker basically creates and updates load balancers, deletes them, we have the health manager, which monitors the health of load balancers, and we have the housekeeping manager, which uh, uh, manages our spare pool. So you can have a spare pool of load balancers to kind of speed up, speed up things. Uh, we, everything is with drivers in Octavia, so, so, we are very, so we can abstract away from what we're using. So for instance, network driver right now supports Neutron, but if you are so inclined, you can write your own network driver, it supports other networks. You have a compute driver right now for Nova, but uh, people are working on adapting that for soon, so we can have containers. We have a certificate driver which talks to Barbican. If you have something else, you can replace the driver. And we have the M4 driver which talks to M4. We chose the name M4 because when we start off the project, we weren't sure which, wanted which form factor load balancers come in. Would be VM, would be a container, or maybe even bare metal. And so we used a very generic name, and that's why we stuck with that. Uh, in this slide, we are showing um, DevStack uh, configuration options in case you want to run DevStack with, sorry, with the M4 driver enabled or uh, with the OVN, which is a new provider um, driver, or also from VMware. Mm. Yeah, the, these are the three uh, drivers that we know mm. that are out there, exist, and yeah. people can start already. Yeah, OVN playing. is coming with Stein. Yes. yes I think some patches they landed in Rocky. So. I don't know if Numan is here. Okay. Yeah, so, um, so yeah. Yeah, 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 a lot of that, a lot of those things are pretty new, so you probably, probably it's dying when they are usable. Yeah. Uh, oops. Okay, I well, skimmed just one direction. slide. Sorry. <laughs> um, yeah, so as I said, so we have three providers right now that we know of. We have two open source. One is our reference implementation, the m driver. So that's like feature rich. We test with uh, TCP, UDP, uh, layer seven, TLS terminated listeners. And yeah, as w that's what we mostly test um, in our project. And then recently in Rocky Stein, uh, we had also the OVN driver, which is open source. So that supports layers uh, four, and so TCP, and recently also UDP. That's mm -hmm. in Stein for sure. Uh, it's very lightweight, so there are no VMs, um, whereas in um, for a driver you have like service VMs, and and because of that it's very fast to provision. So it can be a matter of three, mm -hmm. five seconds, I was told, uh, yeah. between that. Mm -hmm. Yeah, choosing the OVN you might have in Neutron. 
Oh, it, it's, it's, it's in OVS. OVS. Yeah. It's using, so, so you would have to run an OVS cloud. Yeah. So if you have like uh, Kubernetes on top of OpenSock with career enabled, this is very useful because you don't need to create a couple of dozens of VMs and for VMs, you can just use OVN and that should be mm -hmm. enough. Uh, but they don't have layer seven or member health mm -hmm. check at least right now. Yeah, which, which is okay for Kubernetes. So you can think of, OV, of the OVN option, what they now call an Amazon, the network load balancer, and then four would be more like an application load balancer. And uh, the rationale for having that is that Kubernetes often comes with their own built-in load balancer, and so you only want to do L4 load balancing in front. Mm -hmm. And as we mentioned already, uh, VMware, they also have in their uh, upstream uh, repository the support for um, Octavia. So there is the link, I left it there in case you want to check the code. Mm -hmm. It was already merged, but uh, nonetheless. And the slide that I, I previously presented. Okay. Okay. So before we get to the demo, let's summarize. Uh, Octavia is more robust and resilient than Neutron LBAS. So, so we have one Neutron LBAS with an Octavia driver. And uh, the syncing between of the two databases has been very cumbersome. So we decided that we need, need to just need to have one source of truth. And so when you're running only Octavia and make that a source of truth, then you should have a much more robust uh, installation. Also, the, the locking in Neutron Albers doesn't work very well. So if you hammer it with a lot of concurrent requests, you will definitely run into errors. So the Octavia API, as we said, is a superset of the Neutron Albers, Albers v2 API, so it's, it's compatible, but you have more features. Um, again, we said earlier, the plan to retire is September 19th, or the U cycle, you know, whatever comes first. And, uh, and we want you to migrate soon with, from Neutron Albers to Octavia, so, you, so you're ready when that happens. Then we have, uh, and we are trying to get more, so in case you are not using one of our open source drivers or VMware, we are trying to get more of the vendors to develop their drivers for Octavia. So, so, so we, know, we know that Redware has started work on it, and we heard of people want to do an F5 driver, so, so things are coming. And also um, Avi. Avi. They're making driver yeah. too? Okay. <laughs> and Which is good. Which is good, yeah. And, and in case you're using any of those uh, installers, OSA, OpenStack, Ansible, Triple O, Kala, I think Helm has it. So, so, so but by now, I think all the, ins except Charms, I think Charms is getting Octavia support, but uh, everybody else is supporting Octavia, so you, can, so you don't have to install it by hand. You can use one of the installers. Has been uh, GA in, in OS, in Red Hat's product since the green cycle, mm -hmm. since 13. So, GA in the Rackspace product, so it's, yeah, everywhere. Yeah. Okay. We're always, we're always looking for more people helping us. <laughs> so we always need developers, we need code reviewers, and, uh, yeah, so, and we have lots of work available, bug fixing, open flow, whatever you want to do, Tempest testing, the documentation, if you don't want to code, you can also write documentation, so everything helps. Um, if you are a load balancing vendor, write a driver for us. So we, we also made it, yeah, we will talk about it more in the project update, but we now have a driver library and a driver developer guide and so on. And yeah, that's the session tomorrow is where we talk about the project update. So now we need to check the time if we can run the mm -hmm. demo yeah. or are there questions? So demo or questions, we gotta, <laughs> gotta balance. Let me just prepare the demo and... Yeah. Do you want to do it? You know where uh, it is? Yeah, I can talk about it, just fire it off. Just come here, and because so, yeah. you know where, where it is. The... Okay, yeah, just, just make it go. Mm. Uh, uh, not this. Yeah, maybe just I didn't do anything. Run the movie. Or is this for the slides? Ah, okay. Uh, uh, yeah. This is too bad uh, for yeah, still, I'm sorry. Still trying to figure out the software. Okay, now I have to play it here. Okay. Can, I, can I just move this from here? I don't know. Please. 
Okay. You want to move like, oh, yeah. to here, to this part, to the middle? Or? Yeah, just move in the middle. Maybe okay. Less less time. So, so here we are. So, 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 so the whole demo goes starts with um, grading uh, security groups and stuff for the web and grading web servers. And here we're getting where we are graded the health monitor, the load balancers already graded, Neutron, Albas, and now we're grading members. So on here I'm looking where everything is, then I'm curling, and then I will be surprised. <laughs> so I see it's, it's working, the load balancer, but I'm not really happy because it's only, uh, I have two web servers, so it's only the 10 or 14 web server, and then I'm trying to figure out why I only get one, and, and I forgot to add the other member, so that's uh, <laughs> hopefully. I'm so if you have Octavia as a provider driver in Neutron LBAS, this migration will be like instantly, because we just update um, the ownership of some ports and move data from one to the other, or not, not even in that, in that case, with the Octavia uh, provider mm -hmm. driver. Okay. So it's like the migration is, takes one mm -hmm. second. Mm -hmm. Depends yeah. on also on how many load bouncers you have. Yeah. But it's pretty, uh, mm -hmm. uh, yeah, it's pretty, pretty quick. So here I'm uh, setting up the configuration file. So I'm adding the Neutron DB connection which I get from, so I said, from the uh, EDC Neutron, Neutron Conf. Yeah. Just get the connection st uh, string from Octavia, from mm -hmm. Neutron Elbas, you put yeah. it in this config file, then I'm going over there, get the Octavia one, which I already had open, so it will be pretty quick. If you are migrating from the namespace driver, AJ proxy driver to Octavia, then you need to set also the Octavia account ID there. Mm -hmm. If you have the Octavia provider driver, like in this, uh, in this case, you don't even need to set it. Mm -hmm. yeah. Now as it's set up, I'm okay. running the migration. So it was just like that? Like that, because only one load balancer, so it's fast. <laughs> so we, we're testing, are they still working the load balancers? Yes, they're still load balancing. And then we are looking, then we are li listing in, see, I think it's Elbas listing, you don't see any load balancers anymore because they've been migrated, so they're gone. But when you do um, the OpenStack command, which queries the Octavia API, <coughs> then you see there's a load balancer. And with the Octavia provider. Now, now we are, we are configuring the, the, the plugin proxy. So here I'm going in there. I'm looking for Albas, found it here, Albas v2. I'm adding dash proxy. So the migration is already completed. What uh, we were doing here is just to enable the, the proxy so that your current users, they can mm -hmm. still continue using the Neutron command, uh, the CLI, and they will mm -hmm. uh, see the, um, yeah. the, the load bouncers as they were mm -hmm. before. So yeah, it will be restarting Neutron, so it loads in the plugin. Takes a little bit on Then, then now when you do another Neutron Elbas load balancer list, it will show yes. all the load balancers like it would if you would do an open stack load balancer list because the proxy will just proxy it through. Yeah. That's uh, the end of our little demo. Yeah. Okay, now questions. So there are different ways that you can migrate, right? You can first migrate and then update uh, enable the proxy if you want, or you can enable the proxy first and then uh, upgrade, so it's up to um, your cloud to decide your users also, uh, because they may be impacted by some potentially downtime. Mm -hmm. yeah.
Any questions? Oh, there I am. Yeah, yeah. Got one. Um, so, if I understand correctly, the whole Octavia implementation wraps around starting VMs, which then run HA proxy, right? Mm -hmm. Yes. So that is a lot more heavyweight than just running an HA proxy inside of a namespace. Is there any minimal implementation? Like, because, I mean, after migrating, I will have to run a lot more VMs mm -hmm. than before. So I don't know how big these VMs should be. So what, is, what are your thoughts on that? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so the, the, the namespace, uh, the problem with the namespace, I think, is the scalability. So if you have a lot of uh, load, then it will load down your network nodes. And so moving it into VMs is kind of isolates you from that and allows you to have more separation between, between uh, different tenants and separation between the loads. So that, that helps you. So that's why we're doing VMs. Of course, it's a little bit more heavyweight. But, uh, but we are, as we have said, we are working on doing containers. People do a lot of overcommitting, and so so so. So you have, have ways in Nova to make the impact less uh, less drastic. So if you know it's a like a development environment, you might overcommit a lot, and then then you can put a lot of load balancers there without having to give a lot of hardware. But as I said, we are working on adding new things like a container driver and stuff like that to make it easier. Yeah, you also have the uh, so containers that we don't have today, but we could have. Mm -hmm. So contributions would also be uh, welcome. Yeah. Um, so yeah. if you don't want VMs, you could also use like OVN mm -hmm. if, you are, if it is good enough for you, uh, layer four. Mm -hmm. Right now, that's what they support. Um, yeah, so the, the other awesome. thing, the other good thing by having VMs, though we should say, is that you get um, high availability for active passive scheme. Because, right, because if you use the namespace driver, you if we are, one of our networking nodes would, would go down, it would try to reschedule them on other networking nodes, but it would be downtime, whereas uh, the Octavia system is a zero downtime system. Yeah. So you can have like a two and four, so two VMs. One is the active, one, the other one is the, the, the standby, and you can make sure that they are all set on different compute nodes. Mm -hmm. So, so how is that done? So how's the distribution done of these VMs? Are there any options to configure like schedule three VMs to three different availability zones or um, is so that done server, automatically somehow? Is it a server group option okay, in the, Nova? The, okay, the way we do it in today is we, we use a server group and we use, and you can specify an anti-affinity policy. So we also allow you to do the soft anti-affinity if you want to run dev stack or something. But with anti affinity in the Nova, will pick where to put it. You can also specify a flavor, which which will can tell Nova where to go. If you really want to go with availability zones, there's a patch up. Um, the, the big problem with avail availability zones is that then we become a scheduler because uh, Nova is really poor on scheduling. Doesn't have really have constructs availability zones. But we have a patch up where we will pick availability zone, make sure that we only pair load balancers from two different availability zones, and that there's active work on that. Yeah, so. so that's the other advantage of using VMs, because we let that scheduling to Nova. Mm -hmm. okay. yeah. Thank you. Hi, my question is related to the other one. Is it possible to have multiple load balancers in the same Amphora pair? So no, not today. No, we only support um, we only support one one load balancing construct in our system. So in reality, we will run one HA proxy, HA proxy process per listener on the M4. But uh, yeah, it's only one load balancer. Yeah, thank you. Which so, for instance, like one thing that uh, in Stein we plan to implement is flavors. So this, with flavor support, the operators can create flavors, give a name, like, um, and uh, in the flavors they will be able to um, tell which image from clients they want to use to create the, the service VMs, the Enforas. So they can give a smaller VM. Also for the flavor for Nova, they can choose a different one instead of the one mm -hmm. that is to all the uh, Amphoras in mm -hmm. 
uh, in Octavia that mm -hmm. Octavia creates. So you can also create a smaller one so you use uh, less resources for one lo load balancer. Because right now, in DevStack, we use a flavor which takes one vCPU, one gigs of RAM, yeah. and two, three gigs of mm -hmm. disk. Yeah, that's our standard uh, default configuration. Hi, it, that, that raises another question. If you start uh, a load balancer with a small VM, do you have a capability to uh, uh, upgrade the VM later, maybe spawn another one bigger because you have bigger yes. needs, and migrate between the two? Mm -hmm. Yes, so basically the, the way it works today is that you specify the flavor for your installation, and then when you decide you need bigger load balancers, then you can change the flavor for installation. And then the existing ones, we have something called a failover API, where you can just initiate a failover, and then the system will fail it over from the small VM to the big VM. The only downside today is, because we don't have flavors yet, is that then <laughs> all new load balancers will, will be created on the bigger VM. Okay, thank you. Any more questions? Okay. Okay. Thank and you so thank much. You. Coming.